Well, you know, it seems like every day there's new information on the election results, which can be confusing, especially when there's conflicting claims from the president himself. Yesterday, President Trump told reporters he would leave the White House if the Electoral College confirms their votes for President-elect Joe Biden. But what if they don't? Here's Evan Kozloff from our Verify team. With Election Day behind us, our Verify inbox has been exploding with questions about how electoral votes are cast and how they're counted. So right now we're going to tackle two related viewer questions. First, what's the official process for electors casting their votes? And second, what happens if Congress doesn't approve the Electoral College results? Our sources are reports from the Congressional Research Service and Asim Mulji, legal counsel at Campaign Legal Center. Let's start with the process. Each governor sends a certificate showing which slate of electors won the popular vote to the archivist of the United States. The governor then delivers six identical certificates to the state's electors. Then on Monday, December 14th of this year, electors will meet and formally vote for the president and vice president. After these electors vote, they then sign each certificate. Each state is going to send its six copies to various places. One to the president of the Senate, that's Mike Pence. Two will go to the secretary of state for that state. Two more will go to the archivist of the United States. And finally, one will go to the federal judge in the district where the electors met. Congress will then read the results out loud and count them in a joint session on January 6th of next year at 1 p.m. In the end, Mike Pence, the president of the Senate, will announce whether any candidates receive the majority vote. And that brings us to question number two. What happens if Congress doesn't approve of the Electoral College results? Well, the U.S. Code does allow Congress to object to electoral votes. Here's how it works. An objection needs to be in writing and signed by at least one senator and one representative. In terms of what counts as a valid objection, Mulji says the laws are pretty vague. There isn't a ton of guidance about what does and doesn't count as an objection. Because these are internal rules of Congress, it's up to the houses of Congress to decide whether the objections are valid. So if there's an objection, the two houses will then hold separate votes on whether to accept or reject it. If there's a split decision, meaning the House voted one way and the Senate voted the other, the tie goes to accepting the ballot as cast. That would mean the objection fails. From there, the typical count will continue. If you get a majority of votes, 270, you win. And if nobody gets a majority, the vote goes to the House of Representatives, with each state getting one vote. But remember, that process hasn't happened since the election of 1824. This is a fun intellectual exercise, but of course we know that um, the Electoral College, we know the results of the Electoral College, we know that Joe Biden has won um, a majority of those electoral votes. So. Um, something extremely extraordinary would have to happen for, for those results to be changed at this point. With your Verify, this is Evan Kozlov.